I think if you go back probably five or four or five years, the targeting guy, the, the technical guy or gal uh, probably had an advantage, um, but not anymore. Hey, Sam. Um, hey, Steven. I just got a real quick question. You started to talk about um, what causes or what's behind CPM. I think you got to one point. Um, could you expand a little bit on that? Yeah, so CPM is a measurement of ad quality and audience quality, right? And so within the confines of local lead generation, we're talking about who else is bidding in your market. And so I'll, I'll talk about the audience first, and then we can talk about the quality. So the audience, I've like, for example, I've ha I have, you know, we have a library full of ads, and we have the benefit of seeing how they produce in one market and then another. In the United States, there's two markets that are always Real, no, three markets that are for me in my niche always high: uh, Chicago, Dallas, Fort Worth, and Salt Lake City, Utah. Doesn't matter what I do. Why? Why is it? Why is that? Competition is really heavy for that market. So if you have ten people buying media in one location, but then you have ten thousand people buying media in the other, well, there's only so much to go around. And so Facebook is going to increase your cost to buy those impressions according to how many people you're competing against. Okay. So you compete just on people. And then second, you're going to compete based on your ad quality. So Facebook is reverse engineering for a good experience. So let's say you and me are both running ads for the same niche. We, and let's say we even have like the same offer. If my creative delivers a better experience to the end user, my CPMs are gonna be lower than yours, okay? And so, or if you're offering something that is, you know, more unique, you know, less, you know, less commodity-based, you're going to win. Okay. So then the, the lead, the ad experience, if you have a better ad experience, your CPMs are going to be lower, right? Those really are the two big things. Now there's one other thing that people um, don't understand and they do it unwittingly. And that is targeting. Like if you layer on different types of targeting, every time you layer on an interest, for example, that's a tax. They're going to tax you. Right. And it's, it's a tax, by the way, that you don't have to pay because Facebook's algorithm already knows that they need to, to target people with that interest because of what you put in the image, because of like the video, they'll go frame by frame. And every frame, they'll, they'll see what's in your video. Okay. And so then they will target accordingly. Or if you say attention, if you have back pain, they know it's for people who have back pain. So whenever you layer on different types of targeting, because you're smarter than the algorithm, they're going to make you pay for it, right? And that will increase your CPMs. And those are the three core things. Okay. I knew about the targeting, and uh, but the other two are helpful because um, I'm running ad right now, and it's doing like phenomenal, like compared to click-through rates and stuff. And like even the, the leads, like I think it's, well over 10%, like the conversion rate. But yeah, just the impression is is high. So it's probably just ad quality. You just try different, put more effort into the, the creatives and stuff. Yeah, it, it's, um, again, today, the creative person is the winning media buyer. I think if you go back probably five, four or five years, the targeting guy, the, the technical guy or gal, uh, probably had an advantage, um, but not anymore. The algorithm is too smart and they are really honing down on experience. Like they want user experience to be the best possible. So if your ads are bad, your ad costs are going to be high.